Finally, finally, finally. Well, not finally. I wouldn't have... Circumstances have happened. This printer has finally given up on me. Still works, but the ink situation, well, I can no longer get these ink cartridges. This is a very, very old printer. This I have had since 2008 at least. I know I had it while I was back in college back in 2008. And I might have had it for a little bit before that as like a high school printer. Because maybe if like I needed things for class or something and the printers at school weren't very reliable. you know, Because it was pretty cheap to get at the time. But um, I've had it for years and these cartridges are now a nightmare to get. There were some in Asda and then I thought, oh wait no, there's loads of sites that do them for cheaper online. Two different websites had them listed online, didn't deliver them. And then had to apologise and refund me because it didn't actually have them on the website. Then I tried going to a bunch of eBay sellers that do like the refurbished ink cartridges. They still didn't work. <laughs> or no, no, no. Not that they didn't work. They um, they didn't have them. You know, like it says it on their website, but um, they then just didn't send them to me. It's like two weeks have gone by. I'm like, hi, is something going on here? Has the postage been delayed because of COVID or something? Oh, no, we just don't have them. Here's a refund back. Like, ah, ages. I just want ink for the printer. Now, I'm going to give um, big prompts to Catnip on YouTube for this because um, I recently watched, I watched her latest video of when she was teaching how to do sublimation on mugs and how she goes about that. And she talked about using an eco printer. And when I, when I realised... Oh, hold on, let me fix the bloody tablet here. <laughs> so Catnip uses a eco printer. I didn't know about these. I didn't know you could have a printer that uses a bottle instead of a cartridge. So supposedly, the bottles can just produce a great deal more than what a cartridge can. Which does make sense because the cartridge is a small little thing. Like, I think one website did say, like, one of these bottles is, like, the equivalent of 75 cartridges. That could be wrong. I'd have to double-check that information. But this is what it says on the side, you know, 12,000 pages for one of these bottles. And definitely you do not get 12,000... Well, that may be 12,000 by one. No, no, it's 12,000 by one bottle. Um, You definitely do not get that out of a cartridge. You'll be lucky if you even get 100 pages out of a cartridge sometimes. Of course, this will like differentiate between, you know, how much you use and things like that. But supposedly this is meant to last a lot longer than a traditional printer. Now, traditional printers are usually very cheap and you pay more of the ink. I had a little bit of Christmas money saved away, kept it tucked away for something. And this is what I decided to invest in. A very good printer because I really do need one. Because I've started university and... Normally I would use the printers there because you can like use student credit for that and the printers are a little bit more efficient, you can get double sided, you know, things like that. It's usually just a bit more efficient to use the school's printers. But can't do that right now because of COVID, so printer of my own it is. So we're going to get this set up, see how well it works and then we can actually start getting some stuff printed because I want to put some stuff into my sketchbook and I would like to get it printed out now. So let's see how it goes. Something I need to quickly point out, on the box it shows those little balls. Now I was expecting something quite tiny, like the size of my little acrylic paint bottles. Size of that! That's huge! All the ink, like no, okay, like definitely. This thing claims it's going to print tons, I'm now starting to believe that, because look at that! Massive, look at, look at this, look at the big chonky boy that is the black. Chonkies. Big chonky bottles of ink. Like, these are like the size of like acrylic paint tubes. You know, the really expensive ones. Woohoo. Another neat bit I need to point out. So far this has been pretty easy to set up. When you look at the instructions, you think, oh god. But no, most of it's been very easy. But I need to point out some brilliant product design because this is going to make me... Th this kind of thing makes me happy and it should make me happy as it does. But this wee nozzle here, you know, the bit covering the ink. You know, take that off, obviously. 
But look at this little bit they put in here for you. Oh, didn't do that right, did I? <laughs> there we go. Pop you down. Oh, you know, instead of it hanging everywhere loosely and you push it out the way or it gets in the way, you just go, I'll just pop you right over here. Nudge you down. There we go. And ta-da! <laughs> oh, stupid things make you happy, don't they? Someone likes the box. Are you jealous of him being in the box? Should have gone in the box first. Or you can join him. There's that too. And we have the first batch of prints done. Still making some noise. Like, really lovely part about, about these eco printers is that you do actually see how much ink you're using. So, there's been quite a few times when I've bought cartridges, used them for not a great deal and it already says they're empty. And no matter how many times I reset the printer or try to like install its factory settings, it just doesn't work. So it's nice to see what the actual ink level is in this. You can also potentially see how much ink your printing process uses. So right now, like and everything I printed out now is rather faded like not not badly faded but it is pale maybe it doesn't quite show up on the camera but it is faded however it's very very cheap paper that I'm using like very cheap Tesco paper like you know that really big massive bundle that you get for two or three pound or something like it's not good paper so I did just do a standard print was it looking for high quality because this stuff is just going in in the sketchbook it's there as a mood board it's not really there to pop high quality like if i was using the like the my university to print it it would probably i would definitely print it at a much higher quality because then you know all i'm spending is a credit i'm not spending money on the ink um so but it, it's still lovely so now comes the process of cutting everything out arranging everything into mood boards and research pages and I, I, I love that part that's quite a nice relaxing part of it and it means when you go back to look on your process if you're having a bit of a stuck moment you can see what inspired you and instead of having to go digitally or like go into the computer look through your files i i love this part so i can like open the book and go right hold on i'm having a bit of a a mental clutter right now Let's look through this and see where my mental process was going, what initially inspired me. And this will help out. It's like a lot of these shots I really love. Um, because I'm doing a masquerade, I was looking up ball uh, I was looking up ballrooms in particular dances. And this is called the the Venice Waltz. I'll have to look that one up. I think it's called the Venice Waltz, and it's a very particular kind of dance where everyone's dressed in the same types of suits and dresses, and I thought that would be ideal for the comic I'm doing. Um, and it had quite a few lovely cinematic shots here that like that's something you should definitely look up when you're doing comics is look up look up cinematic movies and shots and see how they frame things and that can help you figure out how to frame things for a comic panel like, you know like just imagine that as a simple comic panel right there and there's so, already so much detail involved in that it's quite lovely so yeah um, we'll get working on that now
so we're continuing on with the comic pages right now and at the start of it I was trying to draw rabbit burrows basically um, but it wasn't quite turning out how I had planned so moved on from that and then tried to draw one of the more raw creepier images that I had in my imagination so trying to work on from there and see what I could come up with now this page I did quite enjoy because it did capture some of the aura that I really wanted to make for this comic. I definitely enjoy doing the kind of more painting type process than sketching sometimes. Like I'll do the sketch at first and then I'll lather on layers of brush paint to see where some of the depth and shadow might happen. This part was quite a fun one. I'm trying to show like lifting the rabbit hole a bit like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Um, a friend did note that it looked more like loose artificial grass, which I guess is kind of what I was going for. And now we have, we're trying to capture that process of like dragging something out of the rabbit hole and this f faceless figure is like giving it a little shake to sort of dust it off. So it, it, again, it's trying to show the process of actions or small, simple actions and trying not to make it too boring at the same time and we're continuing on with this process we're showing the process of these rabbits who have become people slowly dressing themselves up and I, I do worry all all the time like is this boring like am I actually capturing what I'm trying to portray it's it's a very difficult process to go through sometimes but the only way I know what works and what doesn't is if I draw out as much as I can, which is why I do it so messily. I draw out as much as possible to try and figure out what works in my head and what actually works on paper. And a lot of the time, what works in my head doesn't work on paper at all, so it's why I have to try it out. And then that usually starts off the anxiety ball of like, oh no, is this entire project I've thought of going to be far too difficult for someone of my average skill to achieve? Well, I've already started. I need to keep going. This is homework now. Ugh. But we'll keep trying. We'll keep poking about and see what we can come up with. Right now, this was kind of a fun part. I was... um, I love those dramatic moments in an anime manga or even in cartoons like there was a brilliant cartoon called Shaolin Showdown and one of my favourite parts is when the Halen witch removes her mask and you see her f full flesh form it's just such a cool dramatic moment and all it is is taking off the mask I wanted kind of the opposite for that I wanted a mask being placed on this face so so far it's been kind of like sort of creepier imagery but hopefully applying the mask actually adds some sort of whimsical delight to it. You know, like they're ready to play, they're ready to have some fun. It's not just creepy zombies coming out of the ground, they are dressing up, they're getting ready for something, they're clearly getting ready for a party. And the party involves playing dress up of some kind. So hopefully this part kind of takes away some of the more a darker imagery that I'd been managing to portray before. Uh, I definitely need to try and get a 3D mask that I can use in Clip Studio Paint. Now this was an absolute nightmare. This is this is something I've got in mind where the characters are walking on grass and then as they lift their feet the grass becomes mosaic. Now as you'll see as we go along with this one, I did try this process. I tried to see how it would work. But when I showed it to someone else, like, because this is part of the process as well, I tend to show my sketch pages to people, one person in particular who is very honest at critiquing my work. So I often show it to her and don't tell her what it is and then see what she thinks is going on. And if what I want people to think is going on isn't, isn't happening, then that usually means I've not done it very well. So uh, maybe it's just because it's messy, I don't know, but she kind of confirmed that I wasn't feeling the right vibe for this. Something about this wasn't quite feeling right. So I thought, okay, let's try moving on to different atmosphere. Maybe I can show the process of moving along. 
so we're still working on this. We're also trying to draw forest clearings. We're trying to show the process of these characters moving into a new scenery. And so far it's difficult, but with time and effort and a little more research, I should be able to figure out something that I didn't figure out before. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you again for coming along and checking out the blog space. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this, feel free to comment on them. Let me know what kind of processes you want to see more of in the future. And be sure to check out my Instagram and Twitter. I'm definitely trying to get a bit more active on Twitter these days. So keep an eye on that for updates or photographs, things like that. But be sure to subscribe to the channel, comment below, and make sure you have a lovely day. Bye now. Take care.